This week on Our Football, we take a trip down the turnpike and visit senior Paul Carazzola from Eastern Pennsylvania and Karan Pratt from South Jersey. Karan Pratt is in a foot race down inside the 30, and he's going to go the distance. And we'll hear from the players about growing up in the Rutgers family. Whether they play 10 to 15 years in the NFL or it just doesn't work out and they never get an opportunity to play in the NFL, they're going to be very successful going forward in life. They're going to be good fathers. They're going to be good husbands. They're going to be good role models. They're going to have a positive influence on society. And if they're fortunate enough to play in the NFL, that's great. But if they play 10 years and then they're done, you know, now they're 32 years old and they still have a lot of life to live. I, I want them to leave our program understanding that regardless of what their future holds, they're going to be really successful. Hometown. Everyone knows each other. A lot of people have been here for years, and families have grown up. Um, more family than friends here, I think, you know, uh, is kind of how we refer to each other. We just all get along. We all look out for each other. When they say it takes a village to raise a child, this is town. This is the definitely the example to set for that. The town is small, but it follows its athletes. Oh, the Pratt Legacy. Every one of them were athletes. And um, my husband was the first. He was tracking football. He had all kind of records. When I was in high school playing football, I was 127 pounds. One day I went to get on the bus, and the bus driver said, Sonny, let the kids get on, and then you find a seat. <laughs> when I grew up, I wanted to be just like him. Tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> <laughs> then my son, Karan's father, he was a football track and basketball. Karan was a very small child coming up. Everybody thought he would be five, six, five, seven, never grow. He was uh, always very focused as a kid, as a young man, as a teenager. He was a devil, but he was shy. You can tell he's shy now, but um, he's coming out of it since he's been in, at Rutgers. He's gotten a lot better. First love was basketball played on the AAU circuit for his whole career. He was one of the top point guards in um, South Jersey and New Jersey. He was a better basketball player. Brown was the first to really play sports, and we kind of followed in his footsteps, which is weird because he's the youngest. <laughs> but yeah, we definitely followed in his footsteps, so. We ended up all loving sports, and that competitive nature carried over into everything, school, sports, life. <laughs> also read my children National Honor Society, and I credit that to his mother. Like she handled all the academics. I handled all the sports. When we go to games, it's 30 or 40 of us, even up to Rutgers. High school games, it was 60 or 70. Have always traveled together as a family. Being able to play here, just, it's a, I mean, it's a privilege, definitely. It's so much, it's great tradition here. I mean, my family's strong family tradition, definitely in Palmyra. I mean, everybody knows who the Pratts are in Palmyra. And just being able to carry on that tradition, I mean, it's wonderful. Words can't even explain it. Just hearing stories about how they played when they was in when they was in high school. So I mean, yeah, it's just it's wonderful, man. When I got here, it was like basketball season. So 
so I kept hearing how good he was. I didn't really know who he was at first, and the funny thing about it was we were in the same homeroom, and he was standing like he's literally sat right next to me. He's always put in the hard work. Even in, when he was young, he would always do whatever it took to compete. He hates losing. But once he started excelling in sports and they found out even though he went to a small school, he could play with the big boys. It's hard to be recruited like that. So we went through the whole uh, going to camps, uh, sending out film, talking to every coach we can talk to. He had Duke offered and like Will and Mary, Delaware, and the smaller schools. And, and we sat in there for about four or five minutes. We talked about the academics. Uh, we talked about the school. We talked about you know, how that program has grew and playing at that BCS level. And then he committed right there in the spot, and it was a great feeling because I knew that he could play at that level. When we went to Rutgers, it was a no-brainer. When Rutgers called, we were excited. Four or five kids from South Jersey went to Rutgers in his class, and they had already uh, signed earlier in the year, so he knew some of them guys, Logan Ryan, Aaron from Penn's Grove. We all get in the van and ride on up to Rutgers and watch the game. It was exciting. It's busy. Uh, <laughs> we want to get there early. We want to try to make the, the, uh, the initial team coming off the bus. It's, it's, it's a long day, but it's exciting. When you're, when you're at the game, you don't even realize that you've been there for so many hours. It makes me so proud because the hard work and dedication he put into it, he wasn't a four-star or five-star athlete coming out of high school. He was an under-radar kid that actually worked his way up, and Rutgers found him. Rutgers did a great job of, of finding that talent. The game is crowded and it's packed and they're winning, so he, he definitely has accepted the college life and loves it. He bleeds Rutgers. I'm just so proud of him. You word, like, words can't even explain how proud I am of him. It's just, he's living out his dream and that's all we always wanted him to do. You know, get his education and, and go from there. I, I am overwhelmed with pride for him and I'm happy for him. the Rose Bowls, the National Championship, and the Heisman Trophy. It has always been of paramount importance in Big Ten football to win the conference championship. This is one of those games that echo forever. This is a game that reaches across generations, that emphasizes the passion of partisanship. This is a game where players make the big play. See, like me being the older guy now, helping young guys, I see what was going on when I was a freshman. You know, all the guys try to stay on you, make sure you're doing things the right way, make sure you needed, if you needed help, that they was right there. I mean, just the the bonding that we go through. You know, guys, Gene, we care for each other. Uh, you don't really find that. Um, in, in, in other places, you know, I have friends across the country. You know, we actually preach what we do. Guys help each other out nonstop. Uh, you know, the, the coaching staff, the, the, the weight room, the academic staff, they genuinely care about us. You know, they, they just don't, you know, see us one part of the day and just forget about us. Um, they, they, genu they genuinely care about, you know, our lives and our future. And the word family means a lot, you know, to, to everyone in this program. Thompson. Now a handoff, and the ball is loose! 
got blazing speed, and Rutgers has the answer. A special teams touchdown. Yeah, it's like that when you first come in, you're just a little kid, 17-year-old kid walking in here not knowing what's going on, not how the practices are, how the weight room is, then you get us, your eyes open up so wide, you're seeing how they lift, how they train, the mentality they have every day, like, it's non-stop, like, focus and hard work every day, and that's something that I take pride in. I learn each day I come in, like, you got that mentality every day is no days off, no weekends, like, every day is it's hard work and you're doing it for a program, so eventually everything will pay off. Um, he's not a big yeller, he's not a screamer. I'd say he, it's exactly what he is, he's a teacher. Yeah, he's not. He's gonna get in your face, but he's not gonna scream at you, you'll learn from it. And that's what I like, I like being able to hear what he has to say. My definition of Rutgers family, a lot of, a lot of people says, forget about me, I love you, but I feel as though mine is just, never leave a person behind. And I feel as though that's one thing I took from this program. We always look at somebody that's not doing as good or need a little help and we just kind of pick them up because I feel as though if you pick up the slackers and pick up the people that's not doing as good or need a little bit of help, it kind of molds everything. You kind of build a covenant and I feel as though that is one thing we um, embody here. <laughs> It's incredible. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I came here, was the family atmosphere. The fact is that you're away from your family back home and you need a family atmosphere here. And every player and every coach preaches that. And uh, you know, it's a great atmosphere. Rutgers is like a second family. So every coach to every player, um, you know, were helping me out, sending me text messages. How's surgery go? How's rehab? How's this? How's that? And uh, you know, it was a great experience. You know, for them to be so supportive, you know, supportive. I'm proud to be a part of this program because I feel like we're we're like a family, and you know, like I said, you can't you can't break the bond that we have here, and you know, when we go out there and we play on Saturdays, you could truly see that we love each other, and I'm proud to be a Rutgers football player. Takes the snap, four man rush, throws it up deep right for Carew, he's got it, touchdown Rutgers, Liam T. Carew on the score. They taught me the things I gotta do to become a man and how I gotta maintain that level to be a man, and that's taught me well. Bullets went over the middle. And that's all the way down to the 15-yard line to Crocker. Boy, did he take a heavy hit. Even when you go back home and you're with some of your close friends, like, you don't see the same accountability that you do here. You know, you, you can just trust anyone on the team. I mean, there's a hundred different guys, and you might not be, you know, best friends with every single one, but if you need something or, like, you're in trouble or something, you know you can count on like every single guy, you know, it's just something special here that, you know, maybe it's at other places, but you know, I don't think it's like it is here at Rutgers. It's a tremendous environment for college football. Over 50,000 will be on hand to witness this one. Oh my goodness! She got absolutely love it! Touchdown! It was fun growing up here, I mean. Being a younger kid, there's always things, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of kids your age. I'm gonna go stop by a uh, basketball court. I would just play basketball at. This is Poplar Park. Uh, I grew up here uh, playing basketball when I was young. The first time I ever dunked a basketball was on that net over there. The athletic ability comes from my mom. This is where uh, I come home when I get my hair cut. 
One of my best friends. We were the two, the two big men on our basketball team. I mean, and uh, you know, we, we battled hard in, in, in practice together. And uh, undersized, undersized big guys. Undersized big guys. <laughs> so, but yeah, I love, I love this guy, and uh, I'm really happy for you know where he's at right now. When Paul was uh, little, he was always interested in sports, uh, playing with a ball, baseball, football, soccer ball. So when Paul started, that kind of just started everyone else. That made Caitlin want to do something, which made Luke want to do something because he saw Paul, and then there's me. Paul's the oldest leader, definitely, the leader of the family. We have been here 27 years, and Paul's been here his whole life. He actually played uh, quarterback in middle school. By the time he got to high school, uh, he became a tight end. Friday nights at Neshaminy are always fun. We're at uh, Harry Frank Stadium. This is the Wall of Fame, where uh, the great players, uh, coaches, people that have give, given back to the program are uh, recognized. But you can ask uh, Taj Alexander, Tyler Croft, uh, JJ Denman, all victims of uh, Heartbreak Ridge. I've seen it all packed all the way around. I learned a lot on this field. Um, my head coach, Coach Mark Schmidt, uh, taught me a lot. He taught me how to play tight end. I caught my first touchdown pass in that corner of the end zone. I dragged my feet on that sideline, and uh, we ended up winning in uh, double overtime. At Rutgers, is exactly how we think. The, the toughness and the discipline of our team is built off of the weight room and the strength and conditioning program. And Coach Cole has set a new standard around our program of where the discipline and the toughness needs to be. One standard, one expectation. We want a mission. What's the mission? Shock the rule. Plain and simple. Here we go, family. Here we go. Here we, Here we go. go tough. Get where you got to get. Get to the mean. Get there and be ready to go. Here we go. Family on three. What is it? We're in better shape to play football today because Jeremy Cole's our strike coach. He really looks up to Coach Cole a lot. We're happier than, than that with the, the coaches up there. First and goal at the two. Here's a rollout. Touchdown. Throw from yep. Nova to Carasola. He's got it. Touchdown. And the Scarlet Knights extend their lead. Makes us all very proud because we know how hard Paul has worked over the years. And ever since I was younger, I tried to do the best I could in school. So uh, it was kind of natural, but it's, di it's different it's in college. It is lots of people telling you what to do, and you got to make yourself do it, kind of thing. Game day is an exciting day for uh, the Carrizola family. We uh, we get into our Rutgers attire, we pack up our vans, and we tailgate. Grandma goes. We make sure we have everything she needs. Everybody lights up. And is he here yet? Oh, it's crazy. It's exciting. The first year was very like surreal. It was kind of unbelievable because I was younger and it was just very something I'd never seen before. Rutgers has been very good. Took care of them. You know, family at Rutgers, people believe it and they live it every day. One, two, three, family! Forget about me, I love you. And all the players, the coaches, everyone associated with the football program, they actually live it. Paul Carazola. It is, of course, the State University of New Jersey, one of the 10 oldest universities in the country. The Big Ten Council of Presidents and Chancellors voted unanimously to accept the application of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights to join the Big Ten in all sports. It has always been of paramount importance in Big Ten football to win the conference championship are assembled in the tunnel, and the crowd is coming to its feet. Rutgers, from an athletic standpoint, was a sleeping giant. You'll hear a roar that'll knock pine cones out of trees 50 miles away. Their academic history's always been very good. 40 miles 
from New York City, a little over 60 miles from Philadelphia, so obviously in a huge population base. For us as a program, the biggest effect right now has been in recruiting. It has given us a definitive streamlined path to the national championship, something I think the players here in the state of Rutgers were craving in the recruiting process. So we've seen that effect immediately. I think the players on our current team are really excited about it. They're excited about playing some teams that have some great tradition in the Big Ten. But most importantly, I think to our players, we'll play anybody, anywhere, anytime. But the access to the national championship, the access to the final four that the Big Ten champion will have, that's probably the most valuable thing to our football program. Touchdown, Indiana! What a run! You grew up in the East Coast and you talk about the best schools that, that you could go to in your area. Rutgers was always there. I think we're both excited about an opportunity to really see what the East Coast is all about. Dives in zone. This is one of those games that echo forever. This is a game that reaches across generations, that emphasizes the passion of partisanship. This is a game where players make the big plays.